Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires where we've just pissed everybody off by virtue of our sheer presence. I just, I stepped foot on this continent and immediately everyone who lives here is at war with us. It's fine, it's not a big deal. Of the players on this continent, we only have to kill Hexawaddle, right? We have to control at least six of the following settlements, so... Okay, this is all stuff up in the north. We are currently fine on this, and it's unlikely, in my opinion, that that will ever change. We control enough of the north for our short campaign victory. Our long campaign victory doesn't care what we own. We're at like half of the total settlement burns that we have to get to, and we're going to get the others when we go back east. Uh, and yeah, of the players on the western continent, Hexoatl's the only one we actually care about. So, a thing that's cool about this campaign design is that once we have finished burning Lizard Town to the ground, we can just fuck off and whatever happens over here happens. I'm good. We just need to make sure that the, uh, the what are they called? The Slan can't interfere with our greater chaos, pl something, I don't know. Listen, I'm not going to pretend to have knowledge of the greater chaos motivation and plan here. I just know I showed up to kill some lizards. Alright, we're going to stay in stealth mode. Oh, no. And I'm going to creep down here and we're going to see if Yak Talon continues to respond as though he knows exactly where we are. And I'll be very cross if he does. Uh, hey there, Fraltras. I can't help but notice that your army is uh, tiny and weak looking. Yes, what's, so. what's the story with that, friend? Let's kind of go out here. I want to, yeah, I want to be in a position where my zone of control extends all the way to the shore of the river. So that he has to run all the way around us to get out of here. But then obviously we want to bulge that zone of control out far enough for that to be a really long, annoying trip. Uh, Marauder Horse is upgraded six. Is that right? Okay. And we weren't planning to upgrade the basic Chaos Warriors. But now that we have the ability to go to Corn with them, maybe we should upgrade the Warriors in this in this group too? Okay, you can just upgrade them at any tier. Hmm. What would we want for fighting Sigvald? What's, what's most effective for this? Like, in theory, there could be a lot of heavy armor. There could be monsters. It's hard to know though. And a lot of a lot of their troops are just gonna be kinda of garbage, you know, warhounds and marauder stuff. Ready. So which which cornate warriors are the right cornate warriors for us? I mean there's a lot of infantry. Basic chaos warriors of corn are still good and versatile. Uh, we're not facing much in the way of ranged combat up here. But eventually this force is going to be fighting the Empire. I might just go with basic Chaos Warriors of Corn. So we straight lose 8 melee attack, but we gain Frenzy, which is better. We lose, yeah, we lose, we lose a lot of stats going straight up, but we gain frenzy, which overtakes all of them. You know what? I am gonna, I am gonna make them du dual weapon warriors. The, the dual weapon thing is just, it's very good. Oh, I thought I had you all selected. There we go. Yeah, and then your your upgrades are coming. I like the idea of a mixed corn and siege force. I think that has a lot of utility. All right. Uh, we need one more of these techs to be able to get our skulls for the skull thrown on. And you know how I feel about that. So I don't think I care that much about the diplomatic relations stuff. I don't think I care about the corruption either, though. We're already putting out... Yeah... I guess this is slightly more meaningful. Our thoughts crystallize. If I'm honest, I'm not so worried about the garrisons up here. 
Like we're we're very close to resolving this problem, probably for the last time. Wait, am I at war with? Where was that? Huh. We still have. We still have the settlement that's supposed to have vassalized them. I don't... Whatever. We'll figure it out. I foresee destruction. And Krom was just running for the portal. Yeah, I don't think anything about that has changed. So we're not going far. Because I haven't remembered to lay down a portal up here anywhere. But that still saves us a turn or two of running. Uh, I don't think the monolith of Katam necessarily needs upgrades either. Praise the ruinous power. Are we all up to date on this stuff? Pretty much. Yeah, garrison upgrades, not a high priority here. We're getting the important stuff upgraded there. Okay, yeah, I think we actually are good. We'll just carry 10,000 gold. The right of conquest. Yeah, I was going to build something else here. Do we want to increase the chaos spawn? I just, like, I can't imagine caring about the chariots, you know? Let's get that in, this in place and make trolls available for whoever wants to come along next. We do have a use of the rift available. I think over by the frozen city next time we're over there is a pretty reasonable place to put it down. Or we could just hold on to it for Ulthuan. Because I don't think we're, um, our, um, our jungle forces are pretty close to being done with the lizard men, I think. Oh, Lord Monster Mundi, their actual legendary lord, has shown up. That might be a, uh, a more challenging fight. That dude is a very powerful wizard. Stay in the shadows, and we might become allies. It would be totally sick if we became allies. Uh, why is my reliability very low? I didn't do an act of treachery. I had acts of, tre acts of treachery done upon me. Um, I really don't want to join your war against the Empire right now. I would do it for a military alliance. No? Nothing? Not even close? Alright. Well, that's on you then. I am gonna I'm gonna be pretty annoyed if we're never able to like really make deals again with people because of some diplomatic stuff that I didn't realize was happening. Those penalties they they wear off over time, but it, it can take quite a while sometimes. I'm not sure what what we would have done. Hmm. I don't know. And I've been very good about making sure that I'm going to war um, on the, you know, like, actually obeying my duties to my vassals and stuff. I'm, I'm assuming that it's because of whatever happened with the crag. We got a notification that they were removed from the game, didn't we? That they had been eliminated. But a ton of their territory still exists, and now they're at war with me. For the moment, I guess I'm going to assume it's a bug. Yep, you're going to turn around. Now the Bellicor's not there anymore. Listen, if we lose Skeggy, we lose Skeggy. There's just too damn many people after us for us to have any realistic chance of holding on to it. And also, I don't care about it enough to try. So this is how the game really slows down. 
Um, you'll notice it was much faster when there were like three times as many factions. Once the game is commanding multiple armies per faction, you see the uh, the enemy turn times creep up, especially if you, you know, as you start getting map vision and it starts zooming the map all over the place to show you stuff. Uh, wound or kill Hexus Doomslayer, a unit in that army. Uh, you are gone. So they crossed the river to flee from us and I am inclined to just allow that to work. We have places to be and things to do. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just move on. Einar. You know, the big one. Big Einar. Do you guys remember Big Einar? Oh, uh, hold on. Where Where is my... Here we go. So, Krom needs to make landfall, and we need to be sensitive to where that's going to occur. Because we do want to combine these two forces. I don't quite have enough movement to pursue you across here. Hmm. And you're in march mode. So I guess if I were to move up here, it wouldn't actually be very dangerous for us. But let's do it as stealthily as we can. What I really want is for Sigvald to turn around and come after Halvthor, and then we pounce on him once he is... I mean, once he has successfully killed Halvthor, let's be honest. We're not going to be able to stop that, but... Uh, let me... First, let me sneak. We are approaching with subterfuge. So Mastamundi's headed north pretty quickly. Which means, yeah, the Shrine of Sotek sits empty. Alright, I'm going to burn this next turn if I am not stopped. And I don't I know that I... Yeah, I don't think I will be stopped. Master Wendy can't even make it this far down. Well, he's in that Astromancy stance, though. If he comes out of that, he probably still won't be able to reach us. I think we'll be fine. All right, let's see what happens over here. I'm actually pretty curious. Oh my god, just destroy Fort Jakova. They're so they're so close to eliminate it. Please, please just get rid of them. I don't want to have to deal with them and they are on my objective list. All right, they're trying to have two armies at once. We have uh, pretty much shattered their economy. All of their good money-making buildings were in Hexoadal, and then on top of that, Hexoadal had a gold mine. So by be being able to strike the heart of their empire immediately because they did not realize the threat they were under, we have basically shattered their ability to fight back. Now it's just a matter of pouncing on them when they are not ready. If we could lure Mazda army into an ambush of some kind, I think that would be the simplest and cleanest way to deal with this thing. Alright, are they going to keep rampaging through all of the Norskin territory? Nope. Sigvald at least did turn around and move into a place where we are absolutely going to be able to take advantage. So then you just have the question of, can Entero take Sigvald by himself? To which the answer is probably yes. Entero's army is actually pretty, pretty advanced at this point. I don't know what kind of combat stats Sigvald has. He might, um, it might, it might turn out to be very tough to actually take him down.
Yeah, so whatever's going on with the, um, with this Norskin faction that turned on us and in so doing somehow destroyed my reliability rating, uh, it seems that they have been vassalized by one of the forces we're fighting against up here, probably the Decadent Host. Alright, I mean, you say they're seeing through my ambushes, but it doesn't look like they're seeing through my ambushes at all. <laughs> They are definitely behaving as though they are getting caught by surprise. May as well mark these ones as well, right? So, the question. Do we just pounce Sigvald now? I guess, actually, if we're going to attack, the smart thing to do is probably to attack the settlement. Oh, I should definitely upgrade this. Yeah, the settlement garrison is just building up. A it's a very weak army overall. And then Sigvald will have to show up as reinforcements, and we can, we can sort of swarm him. Yeah, I like that plan a lot. Bring them to ruin. Okay, it'll give me a close victory on the auto-resolve. Like, here's the thing. Sigvald's army does contain some Slaneshi demon units. But, yeah, there's, like, nothing here that can actually stand in a fight except for 12 bodies of aspiring champions and, like, a unit of Chaos Warriors. I'll just... We'll just take the auto-resolve. We could probably get a better result doing it the other way, but... Uh, I don't think we need to. We got a Lichbone Pennant, which is borderline useless. Also, 17,000 gold, because I guess Sigvald's army was considered to be high value by the game, despite the fact that that's very weird. Uh, and yeah, then I'm just going to burn this. Uh, ooh, and Tira got 10% physical resistance. All right, so we're going to have a period here of, uh, of incredible weakness on their part, and it is time to take advantage. What else would I want? Demonic missile and flying units. Non-demonic flying units. I mean, at some point we're going to have Doom Knights, right? War beasts, monstrous, and monster units, and we have some. This army has a really awkward sort of smattering of everything, which makes it hard to use these redline skills efficiently. Hmm. We could take a little bit more yellow line stuff if we wanted. I'm only at 67 melee defense. Gaining 12 more points of melee defense would actually be pretty good. And then... Uh, we probably don't need more armor. More HP, though. I think there's something to be said for that. I am pleased. Alright. Magical Reserves. Started on Gehenna's Golden Hounds. Just a, a vortex of molten dog. You would think that that wouldn't be, like, a very effective weapon. And mostly you'd be right. It's not... It's not awesome. Dark princeling. Okay. A deluge of slaughter. They certainly were not prepared for this. Yeah, wow, one unit of Sauruses, and then just garbage. Unleash the bloodlust. Uh, let's just... Let's just nuke it. So now I think the question really is, can we bait Masta Mundi into coming out and trying to attack Kaigast? I'm going to do something perhaps unwise. 
we're going to attempt to lay out a, uh, an ambush right here in the jungle. It would probably be a little bit better to actually get my forces together and use one of them as bait to uh, to lure the, the lizard men, but let's see if this does anything. And in the one-on-one, -on -one, I think we'll be successful, probably. Okay, so upgrades again at... Man, plus 15% casualty replenishment rate. That's pretty fantastic. So we're 10 turns off the last point of population here. Two turns plus a whole point over here. Hard to know exactly when we're going to need that money. Oh. Oh. This stuff matters, and here the garrison building being maximally upgraded is actually quite important, I think. We are going to be enduring bullshit attacks from the south probably forever. And I want to be clear that when I say bullshit attacks from the south, I don't mean, like, unfair. I mean, like... Of low quality. <laughs> okay, so they saw through my ambush and they decided not to advance. Interesting that the Dark Elves are working so hard to try to save the Lizard Men. Because that's clearly what's going on there. They're ignoring all of the uh, open territory and stuff and just rushing in to punish me for attacking their old friends, the Lizards. <laughs> Seems like a very strange move. I am the Harbinger. The uh, another war declaration? Yep, you don't even know me, dude. All right, well, congratulations. You're at war with the entirety of Norska. <laughs> for what that matters. How on earth did the ice court end up in control of Essen? Nothing around Essen, just Essen. <laughs> Alright, so while Sigvald is weak, this feels like the time that we need to, um, we need to, like, really push for those castles. We're never going to be able to just, like, fight all of these forces to a standstill. We have to get rid of their supply lines. This is how wars are won. And then once they stop existing, and in theory, the crag are no longer um, no longer have a master I guess we can try to figure out what the hell happened with them and whether we need to kill all of them too oh no they saw through Bellacor's ambush also, a faction was murdered. Also, a final supper. Seeking the gift of regeneration, an imprudent cabal of young magic users has been dabbling in ogre gastromancy. But disaster strikes as they inadvertently summon the Great Maw itself. Smacking its lips with del delight at the banquet laid out before it, the Maw devours the hapless sorcerers where they stand and disappears with a satisfied belch. Ah, this arcane upheaval has fucked up the winds of magic faction-wide, but not like that much. Shadows. That's an amount we can pretty much deal with. Deathbringer. Tread the paths of chaos. Alright, so this is the thing we really darkness. want. Here we stay. We want to have the one army 
standing in position, the other army ambush mode in front of them with a nice high percentage. And we just bait the enemies forward a little bit. Tempt me not. So Fraltros has recruited some additional garbage. Which I think we're mostly just going to ignore. This is wise. You dare. Gosh, Krom cannot keep up. So at this point, this is their last settlement, right? Yes, okay. Good, let's get this shit over with. We shall weave the fates. I am very excited to be done with dealing with these assholes. There's so many elves at war with us, and like, to be clear, we're not just gonna be able to fuck off of this part of the map entirely and ignore their aggression. We have work to do right here. Although it looks like Eatain doesn't have too much stuff on the west coast. There's some stuff on the north side. It's probably vulnerable to Dark Elf raiding. Alright, please do not see through my 100% ambush. They do still have the ability to. 100% doesn't mean perfect stealth, because, you know, there's going to be some dice rolls, and they have modifiers that are not being represented in that number. Yep, saw through it trivially. Well, that's kind of fine at this point, I think. Because now... Yep, all yours. Or not. You know, whatever. Uh, now we're, we have the movement necessary to just put both of those armies onto their last city and siege it down with superior numbers. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really want to fight Mazda Mundi and his whole deal inside of a, uh, a well-kept fortress. I feel like that's a lot of room for bad magic to come and get us. I was about to say, I kind of can't believe that the Vanaheimlings have managed to hold on to a castle in that region, but no, with the AI, to I totally can actually believe that. So with these nerds in the north, the most important thing this turn is going to be getting that last settlement under siege. If your opponent only has one settlement, that's the only place that they can recruit. And so if you siege it, you will completely stop them from gaining any power. Uh, there is technically the, uh, the idea that they could summon their lord outside of the city and then do the recruitment. But in that case, you can just attack him. He doesn't have the benefit of defensive structures or the, uh, the city garrison or anything. You just need to get the job done before reinforcements show up. Yes, show me what the tiny skeggy ar armies are going to do. They're going to s <laughs> they're, they're going to sail into a corner, be real quiet and hope they aren't noticed. Uh, leadership up for all armies faction wide or tribute from vassals up. No, I, I'm good on, I'm good on the tiny amount of money that would be. All right, we got this and so we can move on to skulls for the skull throne. I do so love to Hellblade. Innovation. 
So Masa Mundi's army is pretty light on the skinks. It's mostly real troops. The Makapix's garrison is not too powerful. The Dark Master. And we'll just siege them up real quick. Make sure that they understand that we are bringing 40. There we go. A Pyrrhic victory. Well, I mean... It says Pyrrhic, but it's not actually going to kill any of my units. I suppose we should fight some more battles manually. I don't know that this one's going to be... Terribly fun, though. We're going to get shot at with a laser mounted on the back of a dinosaur a couple of times. But that's probably the only interesting thing that's going to happen. And this gets our goal over with. Another 20k in, uh, in battle victory resources. Just burn this whole shit down. Get some stats that only... Or some uh, qualities that only have meaning against lizard men. Right after killing the only lizard man we'll ever have to fight. Destruction awaits. Uh, so we've got Arcane Conduit. Let's finish the Burning Head and I guess also Cascading Fire Cloak. Useful. Very nearly maxed out on magic already. The first, the four token. So we got Renowned and Feared. I think I am going to finish out Logistician. Back to former glory. Especially since we have a thing that makes us able to heal basically anywhere. It feels useful. My prayers are answered. Alright, we're really running out of meaningful skill points to take on you. Uh, somewhere there is still an army that is technically alive that is of this faction, but it'll die off soon enough. And we just need to negotiate a way out of here without getting crushed by either the incoming Dark Elf armies or the, the Hans Marshall's expedition. Okay. Hard to know exactly what's in Mar Marathi's army, but, I mean, she's a legendary lord. It's probably going to be their best stuff. Tiro's got to blockade this thing, even though we're not attacking just yet. Just, like, build some towers or whatever. Alright, let's get... Krom's not going to be able to get there this turn. No, alright. If they want to ride out and engage me in a field battle, I'm relatively confident we would win that. And then we'll obviously we'll hit this with superior numbers soon enough. And I don't think they have the troops to stop me from doing it. Uh, yeah, this stuff can all stay as it is. Did I really move everybody already? I guess I did. Alright, I think at this point, all of the buildings in this city are... Yeah. This city is complete. Everything here is as good as it's ever going to be. I don't think I'll bother repairing that with the enemies right there. It seems like a real waste of time. Yeah, I mean, this is fine. This is going as fine as it could be going, I think. I am a little worried about escaping from the jungle. We just have to make it back to the portal. And then we can we can actually approach Ulthuan from the northeast so that we're hitting the demons first.
All right, well, it's kind of for the best that they're pushing through the mountain pass there, because that means we can try to just flee around the southern part of the mountains. And I bet we outrun them. Well, uh, well I bet Bellacore outruns them. The secondary army, I'm actually not sure. I suppose another thing we could do if we're worried is just throw down a portal right here. And then let ourselves out and they can't, uh, they can't follow it. That might be the move, honestly. Legion continuing to just fuck around at Gisaru. Not really a, not really interested in pushing through the mountains. Not really interested in taking control of anything. Just, I got all these armies. Everybody, look at all my armies. Alright, I think it is probably the case that we're going to want to just take down the Decadent House's last settlement this turn as soon as our troops are in position. We could uh, secure an easier win if we starved people for a while, but I don't want to risk it given the way they're reacting. Yeah, I mean, Gulator is not really very impressive anyway. Maybe, maybe we don't need to hurry up on the settlement just because the armies that they would be sending to free it uh, are going to be tiny and weak. On account of we destroyed their economy very comprehensively. All right, yeah, you guys just, like, run away. We'll see if the Dark Elves elect to leave you any of your homeland. Destin Cold Eye Emerald Eye is the name of that pirate. He's got He's got some really remarkable eyes, is the thing. The only. So yeah, we could throw it on a portal somewhere. We don't actually know where it will go. We just know it'll go in the province. Or we could try to run around them. Or we could just try to fight. It's not really that tough of an army. Hmm. Okay, uh, you know what? I apologize a little bit in advance. I think I'm going to cut this one short. I still think I need to take care of. I'm a little time crunched for today. So uh, that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, we are going to fight our way out of this jungle and then never return again. And I am so excited about one or perhaps both of those prospects. And we'll see you then.